Hey everyone, so the question for today is, is there an objective measurement for blade sharpness? And so I personally like either objective measurements or binary distinctions. So an objective measurement is something where there is a number associated with it and that number doesn't change. It has a value and that is it. So an example of this would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 1 million centimeters. That doesn't change. It's a set unit of length that has a meaning and no matter what happens, that length is that length. And a binary distinction would be something like a yes or no question. Is this shape a square? Does it have four equal sides that are straight and also four right angles? Either yes it does or no it doesn't. It's either a square or it's not and there's nothing in between the yes or the no. Now you can try and put blade sharpness into a binary distinction. You could say it's either sharp or it's not sharp. But there's a huge variance between a sharp knife and a dull knife. Some people would say that a certain knife is sharp and other people would say it's dull. And even if everyone agrees it's sharp, some people might say that it is sharper than another knife, which is also sharp. So is there a way to objectively measure blade sharpness? That's what we'll be going through today. So to start with, let's talk about the ways that we use to measure sharpness currently. And one of the most common ways among the sword and knife community is paper cutting. So you get a piece of paper and you take your knife or your sword and you try and you cut the paper um, perpendicularly. And if it cuts easily then it's sharp, if it doesn't cut or it starts tearing the paper then it's blunt. Another way that you could do it which is slightly more objective is the whetstone grit or sandpaper grit that you sharpened the knife using. And so you could say it was sharpened a 1000 grit whetstone or a 5000 or a 20,000 grit whetstone and it gives you an idea of the fineness of the edge. But there's a big problem with that because if, even if you sharpened it on a 20,000 grit whetstone but you had terrible sharpening technique, it would probably actually still be blunt. And finally we get to functional testing. So things like cutting soft materials like a tomato. Chefs often like to get really sharp knives and cut really thin slices of tomato where you can see through them and say look how sharp the knife is. But obviously that's highly dependent on the user technique. So if you got a person who doesn't know how to use a knife and you told him cut thin slices of a tomato and you give him the world's sharpest knife, he'll probably still end up with quite thick slices anyway. So none of these are great objective measurements and a lot of them rely on user technique in the sharpening or in the testing. So is there an actual sharpness measurement? And the answer to that is yes, it's called blade edge radius. So this is the measurement of the radius of the semicircle on the edge of the blade. Now if we hold it for a moment there, then a lot of people are wondering what do you mean by the semicircle on the edge of the blade? And if you take a cross section of a blade, then the edge of the blade looks like a sharp point. So to understand this, then you actually have to understand that nothing in the universe is a sharp point. Things are always round. Whether that's round at one atom diameter round, or round as in 50 kilometers radius, then everything is still round to some degree. But the smaller the radius is, the more likely that when you zoom out and you look at it from afar, the more likely it is to look like it is a sharp point. So having a small blade edge radius would be a sharp knife and having a large blade edge radius is a dull knife. And seeing that cross-sectional semicircle is a lot easier when you look at a dull wood splitting axe. You can see that there's a, pretty much a semicircle on the end of the blade and that's because it's really dull. Whereas if you sharpen that, then you think that you're getting the two points to come to a sharp point, but actually at the tip of that point is still a smaller round semicircle. So what blade edge radius would be sharp and what would be dull? So generally speaking, a blade edge radius less than five micrometers would be sharp. What's a micrometer? One micrometer is one millionth of a meter or one thousandth of a millimeter. So it is microscopic, you cannot see it. And a dull knife would be probably around 10 micrometers. So the difference between five micrometers and 10 micrometers is double, but you can't tell the difference with your naked eye because five micrometers difference is not visible to the normal person. You need a microscope and also you need a microscope that has the ability to measure this sort of thing. So probably a scanning electron microscope, which is incredibly expensive. And you know, for the normal person who wants to sharpen his knives, then it, it's not feasible to buy one to objectively measure your knives. But we can think about this for thinking about 
what is actually happening when we cut things on a microscopic scale. So blade edge radius matters quite a lot. There's a really smart guy called Tony Atkins, and he wrote a paper in the 2009 edition of The Science and Engineering of Cutting. And he showed that when you cut with a knife, then most people like to think that the edge splits material as it goes along. But that's not actually what happens. What actually happens is that the knife goes in like a wedge and it creates a crack ahead of the knife in the material. And with a really sharp knife with a small blade edge radius, then that crack is in the direction of the cutting. And so then the knife is moving through that crack and as you cut, then the crack helps the knife go along. So it's a smooth cut in a straight line. Now with a dull knife with a large blade edge radius, then that crack still forms, but that crack sprawls all over the place. And so then the knife isn't going in the direction of the cut, so it comes against resistance and it makes it very hard to cut. So that's the difference microscopically between a sharp knife and a dull knife. So a good way to imagine this is if we have a large block of ice, and now we have a large metal wedge, and if we push that metal wedge into the ice with a lot of force, then that ice will crack cleanly into two pieces and it will split apart and that wedge will go straight through. That's like a sharp knife cutting through material. Now if we have a large metal ball on the other hand and we drop that metal ball onto that piece of ice, then the ice will probably just crack and shatter in all different directions and you won't have a nice clean split that the ball will go through. So that would be a dull knife. And so then there's a lot of resistance to the cut and the knife doesn't pass through easily. So now we know about the objective measurement for blade sharpness, which is blade edge radius, what's the take home message from this? Well, the take home message for this is that it exists and if you have a scanning electron microscope, you can go and measure it yourself. But for the average person and average knife slash sword enthusiast, this is completely useless. And so I think that functional testing is actually the way to go. So if you do functional testing by cutting tomatoes or cutting paper, then good for you. My functional testing is I go and I cut a pool noodle and if I can cut the pool noodle with some difficulty, but it's still possible to cut it, then that's sharp enough for me. Because I don't want the pool noodle to cut too easily because then it doesn't train my sword skills. And I don't want the sword to be too blunt because then I can't cut the pool noodle. So if it's sharp enough for you, then that's good enough. For blade sharpness, sword sharpness, functional testing is the way to go. And don't get too caught up like I did on objective blade measurement sharpness because I was stuck on this for a couple of weeks and after doing all of this research, I found it was completely useless for me because I can't apply this in my daily life. So it's cool to know and I hope you enjoyed this video on this interesting topic, but also continue doing whatever you're doing and you know, it's nice, fun trivia to know, but that's about it. And with that, I'll see you next time.